What's up folks, Spencer here with another lesson of React Native School. Today we're going to be looking at how to add a little bit of uh, animation to this login error state. So basically when we log in, if our values are not valid, we're just going to pop up this little red circle with an X in it uh, to signify there is some issue with that. If I go and type in the correct value, it'll go ahead and go away. Quick note before we get started is this design Though basic, it is based off of uh, this dribble screenshot. So if you like the design, make sure to check out the actual designer's work. All credit goes to him for this actual design. Okay, with that said, the way we're actually going to be adding the animations to this uh, form is using the React Native Animatable Library. And the reason we're using this over the typical animated API in React Native is it's very, very simple. React Native Animatable gives you a very simple declarative API. They've got built-in uh, animations that do all kinds of different things. And in addition to their declarative API, you can actually interact with all of these animations, uh, delays, direction, easing, all of this through their imperative API if you want to go a little bit deeper and customize things. You can also write custom animations, all kinds of good stuff. You can uh, scroll through and look at all the different animations. I'll have a link to this library uh, in the accompanying lesson. So to get started, what you want to do is in your terminal, go ahead and say yarn add or npm install react native animatable. And that's the only thing you need to do to install this library. There's no native dependencies. With that done, we can go ahead and import star as animatable from react native animatable. With that complete, we can go ahead and use a drop-in replacement for a view, an animatable.view. Animatable provides a handful of different components, core components, with an animatable equivalent. If there isn't one, animatable has a function you can call to create a animatable component. If it's a custom one or it's just one that's not supported uh, by default out of the box in their declarative API syntax. Once that's done, we've got our style. In addition to this, we can go ahead and specify which animation we want to use. We're going to use animation equal to shake. Then you can also specify a duration. We'll set this to 500 milliseconds. You can also set an easing property, and just for the heck of it, we'll set it to linear. So now if I go and try to log in without valid values, you can see it's going to go ahead and shake. If I go, I'll refresh this, and if I type in the correct value for username and shake, it'll just do the one down below. If I go ahead, remove this value, you can see this is now an error state. We're going ahead and displaying that error message with the shake. Now, this project is entirely based on React hooks. So when we're using the imperative API, we're going to go ahead and continue using hooks for that. So what we want to do now is we've got an animation when this shows up, but we want to show an animation instead when it shows up and when it goes away. To do that, we're going to be tapping into Animatable's imperative API. And the hooks that we'll need to use to accomplish that are useState, useRef, and useEffect. So first thing we'll do is replace the animation duration and easing with a ref. And we're going to call this the view element. View element is going to be defined up at the top of our error component. And this is going to equal use ref, and we're going to default it to a value of null. And to simulate the behavior we had before of this animation happening when this component mounts, we're going to use the use effect hook, which allows us to simulate using or emulate using component did mount or component did update. And inside of here, we can go ahead and say view element dot current dot animate. So it's very similar to the API we had before. We're just doing it in a declarative way here. I'm going to go ahead and specify which animation we want, how long it should take, and then the easing function to use, which we'll be using linear. And when you're using a the response of use ref, you need to say view element dot current to actually access it. So now if I run this and I actually go and log in, you can see we're having an issue here of rendered more hooks than during the previous render. That's because nothing can really stop this render from happening. So really what we should do is 
call this before the return null. The problem is this is being called immediately like a component did mount, but this component's not yet mounted. So we need to get rid of this display. Uh, if we're not displaying it, return null. We need the component to be here at all times. Now obviously our component's showing up when we don't want it to. So what we'll do is actually basically just set the opacity to zero if we're not displaying the error. So I'll set up a new array called view styles, which is going to start with the styles.air like we've got now. And by default, it's going to have an opacity of zero. If we are displaying the error, then go ahead and add to view styles an opacity of one. So now if I go and log in, we've got that working correctly. And you can see that even though this component's already mounted, we're going to use this effect to go ahead and shake it when the air state does change. Okay, so we've got that done. Now, what about if we want to animate this when it's no longer being displayed? Use effect is going to be called each time our prop changes in here. So we could say if display, so if we do want to show this, oops, then we're going to go ahead and use our shake animation. Else, let's go ahead and change our shake animation animation to bounce out. And we'll go ahead and just remove this linear easing function because we can just use a default one. Now if I go ahead and press login and then provide the correct value, you see what we're having here is a lot of changing of these values. We don't want this to constantly be changing. So one thing we can do whenever we know well, there's just one value we care about and this kind of makes a little bit future proof is we can say use effect should only ever be called when display changes. And to do that to use effect, you can pass an array of arguments that it should, uh, the use effect should listen to as a second argument to use effect. Now, if I press log in and I type in values, you can see everything's working well and it goes ahead and disappears. And then when we delete the value, it'll come back and so on and so forth. It goes ahead, does a, it's a very minor animation, but it does add a little bit of uh, professionalism or kind of, it just, it classes the app up a little bit. Uh, it makes it look and feel a little bit nicer, a little bit more fluid. And fortunately, due to using React Native Animatable, it was really, really easy to use. With the library, you have either the declarative API to use, or you can go ahead and go a little bit deeper and use the imperative API as well, if you wish, like we've done here. It doesn't have to be complicated. And due to React Native Animatable having these different animations built in, all we have to do is say shake or bounce out, and we've got these very small animations that can add a lot to our app. So I hope you found that lesson valuable and I'll see you in the next one.